Hi, everybody. My name's Joe Gordon, and I'm the one that's coming from Wembley. Um, no football tonight, so I've had no problems with traffic, which is great. And um, I'm a toddler group leader in Wembley, in Brent, in northwest London. And um, I'm thrilled to be here along with my assistant, who is Funny Bunny. And he joins me on all talks like this. And if he needs to know about toddler groups, just ask him. He knows all about it. But I'm going to share my screen because I've got the privilege of um, sharing the keynote um, message for tonight. And you're going to learn something new. Let's have a look. Here we go. So I've got four slides tonight um, to share with you, just for you to just think very big about what God wants to do in and through the work of toddler groups across London. There are 140,000 babies born in Greater London every year at least. And I know several that have been born in the last month or two um, so there is such a need for um, babies and families to feel welcome. And you're thinking, what on earth, Joe, has those sheep got to do with toddler groups? Well, I was um, asked to share a little bit about who I am. So you may have gathered from my accent that I am not a Londoner. I am actually from Yorkshire, the North Yorkshire Moors. And I grew up on a sheep farm looking after these sheep and their lambs. And uh, it was an amazing childhood in the middle of nowhere in North Yorkshire. And I came down to London to be a teacher in Brent. And it was through teaching that I was inspired to start a toddler group. And I often say to people that I feel God has called me to um, shepherd a different type of sheep, and that is families in, in London. And on the right-hand side there, this is the contrast in my life. I live very close to that building, the Wembley Stadium. And if you see that blue arrow in the top um, left-hand corner, there's a little hut there with a metal tin roof. And um, that is where I started a toddler group over 27 years ago when my son was four months old. So the contrast, and isn't it amazing how God often calls us to different places and I don't know where you are, but I really pray tonight that you get a sense that God has called you to where you are. So here we are um, in the London, here is the 32 London boroughs and the city borough right at the corner. I don't know what part of London you're from, but I'm hoping by attending tonight, I saw somebody who was from Watford, you're welcome as well. But there are 32 London boroughs um, and what a vast opportunity we have. Uh, what a vast mission field. And imagine if every church and every community had a toddler group, what a blessing it would be not only to those 140,000 babies born every year, but to all those families. And really God has laid on my heart that there should be a toddler group within walking distance of every family of the nation. So hopefully some of you tonight will be inspired if you haven't already started a group to start a group. And I'm there in Brent in the northwest of London, but you will see a list of all the groups on the right-hand side. And I need something called the London Pet Network of Parent and Toddler Groups. And we really believe in praying for toddler groups across London. And every June, there is a London Prayer Marathon, which is what is there on the right. And I know after this session today, tonight, you'll be sent a resource list, which will have some information about that London Prayer Marathon. But you look at the numbers on the side, that's the date in June or July when your borough will be prayed for and we'll be praying for your church. And this is the current map of toddler groups to join the London Parent and Toddler Network. If your group is not on there, please check out the details that will be sent to you. And there is this idea that we are all connected. London is such a vast city. But each toddler group matters because it is placed in a local community, hopefully run by the local community for that community, and is a blessing. And I've got three photographs there of three toddler groups that we're involved with, and I've chosen them specifically. The bottom right-hand one is um, a, a Catholic church where we run a group inside the church. The top right is St. Cuthbert's in North Wembley. That's a huge church. And on the top left, 
there is a hut where we run another group and um, you may not be able to see it on your screen, but the door of that group is falling apart and that group, that hut is um, quite, quite interesting. And I truly believe that ton of groups can be run anywhere. People often don't come for the quality of the building, they come for the quality of the relationships that are in the group. And um, yeah, so we would love to add all the groups that you represent or you're going to represent on this map to see it covered completely in blue. But you know, my last slide is a picture of two toddler groups that run in two Church of England churches in Brent. On the left-hand side, we run a monthly dads group. And there, this is snack time when some of the dads are sitting with their children and enjoying fruit and pizza, of course. And this is actually in the church sanctuary. And I know lots of people say, well, we don't have a church hall, we can't run a group. I believe you can run groups in lots of different places. And this is one of our groups that meets once a month for dads and is just such an amazing opportunity for them to share together. And on the right-hand side, there's that little boy playing with a broken um, hairdryer. It's all very, very safe, but he's blowing the wind through it to the little girl um, at the other side of that pew. This group was running in an old Victorian building with pews, stone steps, wooden doors, and yet was so popular. And I truly believe that our churches, as there is one in every parish, that if they hosted or facilitated a toddler group, what a blessing it would be for our communities. Toddler groups are truly the hidden treasure of our nation. And um, they provide that place of welcome, that unconditional love that can transform and revolutionize our communities. And that's something that I really believe through the work of all our toddler groups in all our different shapes and sizes. And by working together, we're just creating this amazing opportunity for people to know and experience God's love in their lives. So that's the end of my keynote. I hope you don't feel, so we went from Yorkshire sheep up on a hill to Wembley Stadium to the whole of London and everyone matters. Well, thank so, you. To you. No, thank you so much, Joe. I absolutely love hearing every time we... Every time I, I hear you speak and just share your heart um, for for taller groups, it's just really, really amazing. So thank you so much. But I actually have a couple of questions to, to, to ask you, Joe. Is that okay? Um, just to sort of get the ball. Obviously, like, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I'm from Northern Ireland, so London is absolutely huge compared to my country as a whole um, with the Adelaide the population there. So just it, it's sort of like a vast task force, isn't it? Like, it's, a, it's, it's such a mission to see like, how we're going to do this, but it's so exciting at the same time. So... My first question for you, Joe, is um, how do you start a toddler group from scratch? Well, that's a really good question, Sarah. My first piece of advice, that I know it sounds very super spiritual, but I think it's absolutely key, is to pray. Pray, 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 and ask God to guide you and show you um, what is it um, and why is it you want to start a toddler group. I think it's of that reason of thinking, why is this? Is this to bless families in our community? Is it to see more bums in seats on a Sunday? That's not necessarily the best motive for starting a toddler group. But I think it is to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. And then it's to get really practical and to think, what have you got available? And in those examples that I gave there, a lot of people say, well, we can't run a toddler group. I love that cat, Esther. Yeah, it's um, that. <laughs> that we can't run a toddler group because we don't have a hall or it's hired out to a nursery five days a week. Well, there may be a space within your sanctuary that you can have a toddler group or another area um, in that community. I know many people who don't have a hall, they may partner with another church in, in your area um, to, to have a group there. So I think thinking about the physical space that you have is really important. Does it have access to toilets? Does it have access um, to tea and coffee making facilities? Um, I don't think it needs to have child-sized um, equipment or toilets, but just having some sort of space that you can make safe that is accessible. Um, another thing in starting a toddler group is to look at what's already happening in your community. 
There's no point running one on the same day at the same time with someone who's just down the street. Look at what's already available and see if there, there are any gaps. Um, and then see, consider what day and what time would be appropriate. I think for me personally, mornings are great, but for some others, it's the afternoon. And that brings me on to the main thing about starting a toddler group. Have you got a leader and have you got a team of volunteers? And I think that's a really key thing is to sort of be praying and also starting to share the vision that you have, whether or not you're the one that has the vision to start a group. When I had the vision to start Daniel's Den, um, it was very much, I felt God led. And it was my experience as a teacher when parents would say, Mrs. Gordon, give my child some manners and me thinking, well, that's not my job as the teacher to give your child manners. It's my job to build on what you've already done at home. And that's when I started thinking, ah, people need this support. And I really felt that God was calling me to start a toddler group. Um, I just had my baby. There was two other people in the church. And I think one of the key things in starting a group is to find someone who will. Um, I, went to, well, I went to a pastor of the church and he went, Joe, it sounds like a great idea. Just do it. You need to find at least one other person who supports what you want to do to encourage you to pray for you and also to help you. And I think once you've got a leader, um, and one or two leaders, then you can start telling people what's involved and then you can re recruit volunteers. Um, that's often one of the things that a lot of people, I know a lot of groups didn't restart after COVID. God, because people said, oh, well, we don't have the volunteers. We don't have the people to do it. Well, I always say start simple. Don't overcomplicate things. Just do it at your pace with what you've got. Um, start in a toddler group. You need, obviously, you need some basic equipment. But once you start telling people, I want to start a toddler group, um, you often find people saying, well, would you like these toys or would you like these books or I'll be wanting to get rid of these rides on toys? And um, you often find that the equipment comes in that way. Um, so I think these are some of the things to consider when starting a toddler group. I'm sure there's more that you'd think of. Um, but I think, and also just the idea of just to get started, set a date and um, and just go for it from there, I think. Amazing, thank you. Yeah, I think, but simple is always like a good start, isn't it? And then sort of deal with everything afterwards. But yeah, that's really that's really encouraging. Thank you so much. Question number two is um how do you let your church know your toddler group exists? How do you let your church know? How do you let your community or both? We can do both. I think we can change the question. Yeah, just like church community. Like how do you like how do you let people know about your toddler group? Like how do you know, how do you know that it exists? I mean, obviously, it, it keeps it simple, setting the date, finding a venue, but like, how do people know about it? Like, what's your, what yeah, you say? So there's a, well, obviously with your church, hopefully you were able to speak to the leader in your church to share the vision and that they would get you to possibly share at the front of the church that you're starting a group. Um, I remember, I still remember the moment when um, it was announced in our church and they prayed for us and there was this amazing prayer that, our toddler group will be known to the ends of the earth and I remember sitting there laughing thinking hang on we haven't even got started yet but actually that's true so having people praying for your group is a great thing but publicity is really important now I have brought two pieces of publicity that we use in our groups one is a postcard that's got like our website obviously but if it had you got the details of your group with the date the time and the place and possibly sometimes a picture of the group, of the venue, um, or and also to use the word, an opportunity to play, make friends, just some simple words, because it's unbelievable the number of people who have no idea what a toddler group is. And also sometimes people want to use the word baby and toddler group about who is welcome. But having some sort of publicity material is vital. Um, I think posters on your church notice board outside as well as inside are really, really great. And investing in a banner so that when people are walking by um, or driving by or on the bus and they see that sign, we have lots of people who come that way. 
I think obviously put it on your church website, get into local Facebook groups. Every local authority has an obligation to advertise toddler groups. So get on your local authority list because people are looking for places um, that are accessible and affordable. So many groups these days cost £10 or more to come to. So having a toddler group and knowing about it is so important. And people are searching online uh, for groups. So whether or not you use your social media, um, your website, have it there. But also encourage your church members. And then when the toddler groups start, so that's why these postcards are really good. We give them to our families because we say, when you're walking down the street or you're at the park or you're at Asda, if you see somebody with a little one, give them one of these to invite them because not everybody's got the confidence to invite other people. And um, and I always say to people, oftentimes I run a, a national movement called 1277. We've got a great Facebook group. But one of the things that comes on there, people say, oh, my group's too busy. Imagine if your churches were too busy with under fives and parents and carers. But, you know, a, a busy group is good. But I always say to people, there's someone living in your community, in your area, who right now, I used to say, is watching Jeremy Kyle, but they're feeling lonely, they're feeling isolated, they think everybody's got it together. And it's so important that you reach out to those people who are not there. And I think that's where having a poster outside your venue or or giving them a verbal invitation or something to look at like this, it really encourages people to know that you're there. Amazing. Thank you so much. So, so like, what would be your top tips? Like, you're like a toddler group expert to me. Like, all of (laughs) you, you've just, you've had years of experience. Um, What are your top tips? Like, what would be to to share with with everyone we've seen I think the most important thing is be yourself. Don't try to replicate what somebody else is doing. Of course, learn from other people, ask questions, see what they're doing. But look at your context where you are and what facilities you've got. Um, You know, a lot of people say to me, oh, you've got a very multicultural group. Well, I live in a very multicultural area, so of course I'm going to have a multicultural group. I think one of my top tips about recruiting volunteers is be specific about the task of a volunteer. Say to people, you don't actually have to love toddlers to volunteer at a toddler group. You can come early and help put out the equipment or you can come after they've gone and put it away or you can be in the kitchen doing the washing up. Um, And also, I've said it to a lot of people about your volunteers, don't just look within your church or your congregation to be the volunteers. There are many people living in your parish or your community, people who are retired, people who may be unemployed or looking for work experience. Get it out there, the message that you're needing volunteers and you as the leader or as the church team, be clear about what the expectations are. And most people will be very, um, we, have all, we have all types of people volunteering at Daniel's Den, but they know the expectations. So... Look for your volunteers and train them up. It's just, there's such a wealth of people out there in our communities, but they just need to know how they can help. Those are my two top tips. Amazing. Joe, thank you so much. Um, okay. Really, thank you for sharing. We're, um, anything that Joe has shared, we're sending out like a resource list at the end. So uh, I think we mentioned like Daniel's Den or the or the um, parent and, and a toddler group uh, I network. That's all going to be sent to you. So you don't have to like, start googling or anything like that we'll make sure that's all sent out to you so thank you so much um yeah great thank you um so our next um our next speaker is jaws um and i would just love to introduce jaws um he's going to be just sharing um so it's it's sort of a different approach now on on she's um well i mean just uh, i mean tell us about yourself where, where are you from what do you do what so um i am um, the uh, children and family pastor at St Peter's in West Harrow. Um, I work there full time, but um, I've been there eight years. Previous to that, I was at one of the churches in Joe's Pictures um, at the Cuthbert in North Wembley, um, and I was the part time children and families pastor there um, for uh, about eight years. Um, so, yeah, so I'm full time now at St Peter's in West Harrow. 
and I've run toddler groups in both of those churches. Amazing. So, um, yeah, so this is still a bit like you've had experience like actually rolling, you know, and the, and like rolling toddler groups in churches. So just a few questions to ask you as well, just to yeah. get on, on that theme um, before we go to break out in, in groups. So question is, um, can you tell us about the different approaches you've taken on incorporating faith into a toddler group? I can. And they, in the two groups, I've had two completely opposite approaches. Um, when I was at St. Cuthbert, um, I felt really strongly that I didn't want to have, um, like a Bible story every week. It wasn't an overtly faith based group. And that's because it was quite a small group and everyone who came pretty much came every week. And um, it started small, it, it did get bigger, but it was always a fairly small group. Um, so, you know, 20 mums at most. Um, and so I could really get to know all the mums. Um, and so I felt really strongly that I, I I didn't want to have an agenda with them. I wanted to get to know them as individuals. Um, and so uh, my sort of a, my faith approach, if you like, was just to get to know them, um, get to know about their families, chat to them every week. And then um, just share my space as it arose naturally. Um, uh, and, and yeah, sort of do it that way. So that it was much more, it felt much more like um, a friend sharing their faith than, than come to the group and I will, you know, present this to you. Um, and that worked very well for me because, say, it was a small group. Parents were really regular. They came every week. And there was one week when a mum came and I said, how are you? And she said, oh, you know, I'm really struggling with my back. And I was like, well, you know, I come to this church, you know, I'm a Christian and I pray for you. And she was like, yeah. So I just thought I prayed for her, um, just the, the healing for her back to be healed. And it eased up a little bit. And in the coming week, um, it got better. Um, I'd love for you to stay out and then she, you know, came to Jesus. I I don't really know the end of that story. Um, it's a while back now. But it was just great to be able it felt really natural, it felt part of our friendship it, that I could say I could pray for her. However, where I am now at St. Peter's, it did start off I kind of inherited the group and I changed it a bit over the years. And then when we came back after COVID, um I was I swapped the day. We used to be an afternoon group, which, which Joe mentioned, um, which completely sidelined, used to be really, really popular because there were no other groups in the afternoon. And then suddenly it changed and nobody wanted to come in the afternoon. So I changed the day of when we came back from COVID. And also coming back from COVID, I felt I wanted to make the group really overtly Christian. So it was a complete turn for me. I, I really changed my mind on it. And the only thing I can tell you why is that God was prompting me to do it. Um, uh, it's a much larger group and we have a lot less regular people. So we've got something like 60 people on our book and I can have between 25 and 30 turn up and it's not always the same people. So the, the relationships are different. And so I felt it was really that I wanted to make it about the question, you know, um, we they're coming into the church building. Our church is not a traditional church. Once you're inside, you wouldn't know that you were in a church. Um, but I felt really strongly that I wanted to make it overtly Christian. So it is now. Um, and uh, when people email me and say, can I come to your session? I always say it's a Christian group. It's got Christian content, but you don't have to follow this space to attend. Um, and I've never had anyone say, oh, I'm not coming to your group because it's Christian or I have a different faith. Um, everybody just goes, yeah, that's fine, uh, which really surprised me. To be honest, I expected a bit more um, resistance to it, but, but people are very happy with with that, the faith content. I mean, so it, it, it just shows that the community you built, you know, it, it, it's all to do with like relationship and then we bring faith into it and there's a way of like it, it, incorporating that into your Taller groups. Um, so like how have you kept a taller group faith related? Because obviously like not everyone's gonna be Christian if they come. So how have you 
reflect on that. So, so what I do, so what I introduced when I came back was um, that every week we have a Bible story. And I've done um, a plan for the whole year. So every year it is the same. I repeat everything every year because those families are probably only with you a year. And if they are with you more than a year, the, the, the repetition is fine. So I have a Bible story every week. Um, so we start off with creation and the Old Testament, and then we do Christmas, and then we move through and we do um, stories about Jesus in the spring and summer term, and obviously we incorporate Easter in that. Um, so we have a Bible story every week. It's really simple um, pictures. I've just um, downloaded very child-friendly um, pictures um, from the internet. I've printed them up, and I just I hold the pictures up, and I show them around like that. If I've got a good book like Christmas, I've got a really good big book. I use that. Um, but I just found the internet pictures were the easiest thing for me. And um, every week we will have a craft activity that is related to the story, sometimes very tenuously, but, you know, <laughs> it's very um, it's very under five friendly. So it's sticking bits of paper onto a shape, it's colouring in a picture, it's drawing around your hands and cutting it out, it's making a paper person look like yourself. You know, it's things like that. Um, I have a little stand on the craft table that explains what the craft is and how it links to the story, just for the parents, really. Um, I try as much as I can to make the messy play table relate to the story, but that can be trickier. But if we're doing a story like Coming of the Storm, we have a, a, a very thin tray of water. Um, when we're doing Jesus Gets Lost in the Temple, we have shredded paper and have to try and find things in the shredded paper. Um, sometimes I run out of ideas for the, for the method play and they just get sand or play-doh, whatever, but it, that doesn't really matter. Um, and then, uh, at the end of the session, we tidy up together, we sit in a circle and, and I do the story and I have a little bit of a, a thing that I say every week. I say, here at St. Peter's Church, we are Christians and that means we believe Jesus Son of God and the Savior of the world. And so all our stories come from God's story, God's true story, the Bible. And then I say, you know, today we are doing Jesus Calms the Storm. Uh, wherever I can, I will get it to be interactive. So obviously, calming the storm is really good fun. You do wind and you do rain and you do waves. And then you say, stop. And it is miraculous. They do stop. <laughs> um, and um, we do the story. Um, I try to make some sort of statement at the end of the story, like this story shows us the wind and the wind and the rain and the waves knew that Jesus was their creator and they obeyed him. And sometimes by that point, the children have got bored of sitting still and it's quite raw because so sometimes my brilliantly made point about the story will not get heard. Um, but, you know, I try and, and say it anyway. And then we do singing time. And I always start off with um, with all the Christian songs. So we always do our God is a great big God. We do Here's the King of the Jungle. I found, and it might have been from one of Joe's Facebook pages. I can't remember this one. But I found a great Christian version of from my head, shoulders, knees and toes. which goes from my head down to my toes. God loves me. So we use that one. Um, what else do I do? We, I've got something like five or six Christian songs, and we always start with those, um, and then we will go into the, the wheels on the bus sort of thing. Um, every week in my group, I, I have a, a, sto- a you know, book corner, and all of the books are Bibles or Bible stories there. I did put out, sometimes I put out some popular other ones, like, and a surprise, and um, Tiger Who Came to Tea, The Hungry Cat Killer. Um, but I try and mix it up as well. There's some great um, board books out there, some you know, Christian board books, and we have the books of the Bible posters and, and sort of Bible verses around that table. So there's, there's quite a lot there. Um, and in my WhatsApp group, um, my group rather than Monday morning, I always, Monday morning, I always say, 
don't forget toddlers is on today. We are sleeping their own cups uh, with a lid. Um, don't forget your cup. And today's story is Jesus Calm the Storm. See you later. So um, it's just sort of reinforcing that we are a Christian group. We do also have a prayer box as people sign in that they want to write on a prayer card and pop it in the box. But they hardly ever do. <laughs> I think it's become a part of the furniture. People have stopped seeing it. We very rarely get prayer requests, but it's always there. And then on top of that, obviously, when I'm walking around the room and talking to people um, and they're sharing, you know, the, the struggles of, of, of parenting, I always say, oh, I'll pray for you. Um, and um, I uh, yeah, have to leave myself notes to make sure that I do pray for people. It's that really wary of things, oh, I'll pray for you, and then instantly forgetting. So I write myself a little note and I do make sure that I pray for them. And then you can, you know, follow up how things are going. Yeah, that's it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how you've tailed it to your own as well. So it just shows like how many things we can do, how creative we can be, how simple it can be. Um, but making sure that we can that it's okay to like bring faith into a church talker group, you know. So that's really even what I would say, like really echoing what Joe said, I think, you know, my story shows that like for me, the first one it was I wanted to I didn't want it to be faith based. The second time, I felt yeah. like you've got to do it your way. You've got to yeah. have your the, the faith as part of your toddler group in your way, the way that you feel comfortable. If you feel incredibly awkward about it, there's no point doing it. It won't send the right message. So I think it's about doing it your way. Definitely, definitely. And it, and it can be hard as well. It can be hard, but we've got to trust God. You know what I mean? That actually, like, we've been put in this position to serve the community in this way. So it's all about trusting and believing in yourself that actually, like, God's put me to do that. So that's really fantastic. Um, so, how is he? Yeah. I don't know, it's amazing. Every Monday, quarter to 11, I get to see 30 kids going, Oh, God is a great. Yeah, it's so <laughs> And I think I'm because they sing it every single week, they go away and they know it. And I'm like, yeah, they're singing to the time of God. Yeah, it's really, yeah, I, I love the singing parts too. They always get really excited, or, I, or, or, they, or they sometimes know like when it's coming. Like, they, like and I've had them like come and sit in the mat and like, get ready to go. Oh, okay, we're going, we're going to do a song then. That's brilliant. Perfect. So, um, how can we visibly connect our taller groups with the wider church community? This was a bit of a tricky one because I think it really depends on your church situation. But I think it's so important that the the parents attending the topic group know that they are part of the church. It might not be something that's important to them, but it's really important for us as a church to say, you are part of our church and come into our building and you are a part of what we do. Um, I mean, I'm really blessed because I work full time. Um, it's easy for me to make sure that my vicar knows what's going on, the leadership team know what go, what's going on. Um, but I think it's just keeping it on the agenda about saying to your your church leader or your leadership team, you know, this, you know, we had this many people at our toddler group this week, um, and and telling stories, you know, oh, I had a great chat with a mum, um, at this week about you know, how, how hard it is raising a kid. And, and I, we really got into a good conversation. And, you know, like I, I asked her how she coped with that, what keeps you going in life. Really telling those stories about how you're connecting with the parents, I think, and it shows the value of it. Um, and it, you know, shows why you're running it. Um, and I think, you know, we've had examples of um, we've been able to support a mum who's going through domestic abuse. Um, and I think it's just so, it's so rich, the things that you can do in a topic group. And so I think you have to be your own champion. You have to keep talking about it. You have to go with stories. Go to your church leadership with prayer requests. You know, can you pray um, for, for this person? You don't give names maybe, but can you pray for a mum who's struggling with this, you know? And I think it, you have to, you have to sort of just champion it yourself and make sure people know what's going on. If you can get people to come, I mean, our toddler group is really chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great, but we've got a lot of very young children. Um, and um, so if they don't sit still for very long, it's a very physical place. Um, 
So people like sort of like, oh, there's a lot of noise coming from your room. But you're like, oh, come and see it. Come and see what it's like. Come and watch 25 children think how great God is. You know, like it will it'll melt the hardest part. Kind of, and I think get people to come and look. And I think it's really important that your church leader knows what you're doing, knows why you're doing it and gets it because that's such a big source of support for you. And that's what makes it part of the church, you know? Um, and if you can get your leaders visibly into the group, that's what makes the parents in the group feel that they're part of your church. Oh, yeah, the vicar come, must, you know. Um, wh- how, whatever we know about churches and church structures, people outside, you know, the vicar is still everything. <laughs> so get your vicar in, um, get them to be, to be visible. Um, I tend to do something special, something different at Christmas and Easter. And I'd like to get the vicar in um, then and um, get him to, you know, tell the story or do or something, just because I think it reinforces people that um, they're part of the church, that they're important. I mean, she's perfect. I think um, sort of, you know, Sometimes it is hard to engage our church leaders to like, be involved with all groups. So how can we engage our church leaders to? I mean, you've probably mentioned it already, but have yeah, you? Yeah, I, I think any it, other tips or anything like that, or is you know, telling the story, tell stories, um, and I think be really specific. Like when something great happens, oh yeah, remember that and and tell that story. Um, whether it's somebody who, you know, was really, like Joe was saying earlier, somebody who's really lonely and isolated and found your group and thinks it's amazing, somebody that, you know, is struggling with something else in life, and have the stories that show what you're doing um, and get them along, get them along however you can. Um, I think it's, it's the key and let them see um, what it's like and what it means for people is the main thing. Amazing. John, thank you so much. That was really as well. I'm really, I mean, it's, and that's one, you're, 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 you're just one person sharing your story. So can you imagine if we had mm. loads of stories to share? So it was really encouraging. Thank you so much.